Hey you, it's time for a book review. Oh, it's what we're gonna do. I want a book review. Let me share a preview of my book review. Hello, everybody. Corey Richens here. I want to get with y'all today for something so exciting, so fabulous. Yes, folks, I am the author of the grief book that has already been published. I'm a published author, don't you know? I published that book after I murdered my husband, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is, I'm here today to preview one of my new works. It's just going to be exciting, so pull up a chair, grab a nice hot cup of java, and just sit back. I'm going to take you into my new book that is in the works right now. It's about me and my dad in a Mexican prison as well. It's going to be so, so action-packed. And I'm so excited I get to share this preview with you today. Remember, y'all, it's a Mexican prison. I'm there with my dad. We're in Mexico trying to get drugs. And the title is Walk the Dog. Sky is save, saying even if the gummies have fentanyl in them, the prosecutor will say, I tried to put the fentanyl in the gummies. So Eric would have them. Stupid, I know, but that's what she was thinking. We will still test them, though. However, she wants to link Eric getting drugs from Mexico. So we need some kind of connection. Her private investigator is doing some research on the ranch and the cartel place Eric would stay at. Here's what I'm thinking about. You have to talk to Ronnie. He would probably have to testify this, but it's it's super short, not a lot of it. He will need to tell Sky at the meeting next week. Upon information and belief, just like they say, a year prior to Eric's death, Ronnie was over watching football one Sunday, and Eric and Ronnie were chatting about Eric's Mexico top trips. Eric told Ronnie he gets pain pills and fentanyl from Mexico from the workers at the ranch. Not to tell me because I'd get mad. Because I always said he just gets high every night and won't help take care of the kids. There are pictures in my phone of Eric passed out on the floor or in the chair. Ronnie should have texts from Eric talking about getting high as well. Eric told Ronnie he keeps them in an allergy pill bottle in his work truck so I won't find them. Ronnie never told me about the conversation. Eric finally told me and asked if Carmen could get him some. Eric never wanted anyone to know he had an issue, especially get caught. He always wanted Corey to go down for him when they traveled. Eric would put his drugs in Corey's bag at the airlines right before they boarded. That way, if they were caught, Corey gets in trouble, not him. Once they got to wherever they were going, Eric would pull the drugs out of her bag, and it would cause a huge fight. She was pissed, and he would risk her going to jail for his drug use. He would just laugh about it. Eric couldn't ruin his image that he had drug issues, so he would do whatever he had to. Corey has never done any type of pills. Didn't like them. Rarely would she consume THC, only if Eric begged her because it was a special occasion. Reword. This, however, he needs to make the point just include it all. The connection has to be made with Eric and the drugs. 
Ronnie will have the messages to prove Eric confided in him about getting high. He can be short and to the point, but has to be there. Upon information and belief, LOL. They never found pain pills or fentanyl in my house because he hid it in the allergy bottle in the work truck. And Cody emptied out the work truck within a week, so they never found them. When you talk to Ronnie about this, meet with him in person. I worry sometimes your house and phone are bugged. Maybe drive down to Salt Lake and meet him after work without Bree, his wife. Sky has to make the connection between Eric and Mexico because that makes the most sense in her mind. If it's Ronnie's information and belief about the conversation over football, she can use that as a connection. Tell Ronnie, don't overanalyze it. It was a quick two-minute conversation, LOL. Tell him I need him to do this. Bring me home, and then we will get those damn bitches. Also, please text Lotto or call and tell him not to text me anything about us doing things together ever like church, skiing, trips, nothing that puts us together. It doesn't look good. We're so close to the end. Let's push through. Have the conversation with Ronnie before he meets with Skye. Then tell him to tell Skye at the meeting about the conversation. Hang in there. We're almost there. Love you to the moon. Take vague notes of all this so you remember before you wag the dog. I saw a commercial yesterday, Utah Mortgage Relief. Google them, please. It's where people behind on their mortgage. Can you see if they can help at all with Marissa's house, please? We have to get hers, yours, and Chelsea is taking care of ASAP. Try to go to the place in Kamas where what they're asking uh, about asking Lotto to do a loan solely in his name and not have you on there. I know he can do a home equity line of credit on his house or his hideout. Not sure he would, he would, but I know he has like a million in equity. Maybe he doesn't know about a home equity. If he wants to help me, Taking care of the loans is the most important. I don't give a shit about the Yotels. Remember, I told you one way to get it, Katie, is going through my phone and finding a picture of her girls, even with the boys. Print 15 copies and send them out anonymously to different media companies, obviously. Don't email the pics so it's traceable. She would be livid if it got out in the public. You would just have to do it sneakily and be careful. She would try to trace it back to you. If not, no worries. Sky's having my girls do the first interview with Good Morning America. Please tell Chelsea to bring up that he hasn't been to church in almost 13 years that she's known him. And Eric would brag to her about how much he drank and did pills in high school. Tell Kelsey to say Eric always wanted Corey to go down for him. For example, he would put drugs in her suitcase when we would travel together, so if anyone got caught, it would be Corey. He would put it in her bag right before they left the house, so Corey didn't know. And then when we would land, wherever Eric would take them out of her bag, and Corey would be pissed, and they would argue about it, tell Kelsey to say how Eric didn't care and would just laugh about it and say, well, I can't get into trouble, as if I was okay that I got in trouble. Have Selma talk about Eric in Spain. 
not being able to drink, so he was looking for drugs the entire time, and explained the drink the waitress gave him, and how I called his doctor and went to the pharmacy immediately. Have Allie talk about how the sisters have always been jealous of me, because anything they could do, Corey could do better. Being a mom, college, stay-at-home wife, until she built a million-dollar company. A nice house, car, everything she had they wanted. This comes down to jealousy and money and Eric's partying that they don't want to acknowledge. And sadly, an accidental overdose. Lastly, don't forget to work on the gun receipts. We want to file charges and let the prosecutor not do anything about it to use in our defense. Will you buy a box of Crest White Strips, open them up, put them in an envelope, and have Sky give them to me? You can tell her what's in the envelope. I'm sure she won't care. I'll make sure they can't be found in my cell. My teeth are so yellow with all this coffee and tea all day. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hang in there. We're getting there slowly. You're the best mom in the whole world. I'm so lucky to have you. So there it is, y'all. Corey Richens, the author that I am, giving you a preview of a fictional book of me going to Mexico with my dad and, and looking for drugs. <laughs> a preview to a fiction. A fiction that's going to bite me in the ass.